I, you know, I think that people put way more focus on genetics for antler development than, than it deserves. And we can estimate the proportion of all the antler development you know, for, for the population that's due to inherited genetic factors. And for young bucks, it's maybe 25% of their, of all the, the differences among individuals is due to genetics. For mature bucks, it's probably 40 to 45%. Now that leaves another 50 plus percent that's due to what we call environment, part of which is nutrition. And so in some ways, people seem to, you know, their first reaction is, well, you know, we're, you know, we're trying to cull and do all this genetic manipulation and it, it, you're telling us now that it doesn't work, what do we do? Well, I think actually it's kind of good news because that other 50 plus percent that's due to environment is something that managers can directly affect. And so by nutrition, that means, you know, improving uh, forages, planting food plots, um, all of those type of things are definitely within management control and they can happen within a pretty short period of time, within a couple of years. You know, several years of a good food plot or other nutrition program can make a huge difference in, in body weights and antler size and things like that. And you could never make that, that fast of a leap just by manipulating genetics alone. There's always a bigger component to the nutrition part there. And like I say, that's something that, that is usually more under a manager's control. So especially in open populations, if you're not behind a high fence or something, you know, just forget about this genetic stuff. But you can do a lot of on the ground management that can make a, a really meaningful difference.